And then I said, uh, Arbor Day was yesterday. Oh man, that is funny. <laughs> you guys are in for a good show tonight. <laughs> I wish you'd heard the beginning of that story. <laughs> What's up, Waynesboro? <laughs> that is, that is kind of a correct response. Are you awake, Waynesboro? <laughs> Um, I know that it's only 7.30 on a weekday, but <laughs> we expect our, our audience to be at least half awake when they get here. Judging by the front two rows, they're, <laughs> they're not. If, if people walked in and didn't know there was a comedy show happening and they thought the first two rows were designated for people for the show, people would just be like, oh, this looks like a good restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I always come down on you for not sitting here. And I always will, until you do. Hey, uh... Until you do! <laughs> now! <laughs> by, by a round of applause, how many people have been to one of these before? <laughs> what, uh, here, here I mean. Okay. And who has not been to one of these before? You have to, you have to answer Clap. by applause. No, no raising That's, hands. There you go. Thank you very much. This isn't a classroom. This is We're weird. not gonna judge you or grade you at the end of this. But there are very but strict rules. But we will rules. all decide. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can send you to APs off. <laughs> <laughs> He'll give you a stern spanking. So I guess uh, I guess we're members of the Comedy Square Table, which is something that we invented like six months ago and said we were going to say every show and never did. Never ever. We're embarrassed by it, really. Yeah. <laughs> we're part of a group. Yeah, we created this group. You can like it on Facebook. There's seven likes. <laughs> it basically means me, Tom, <laughs> Rosie, and Farley. <laughs> yeah, we just like each other. We <laughs> pat each other on the back. You did really great. Yeah. Um, so that's why we're all interchangeable if you were at our last show. That's why I was just like, Farley, you go. I'm, I'm sick of these people. But I missed you. I'm back. I'm hosting this show. Also, his name is Kenneth. I'm Ken. That's Rosie. <laughs> For you new people. <laughs> um, so I guess we should uh, say some rules-ish. Yeah, uh, mostly just don't talk to us. <laughs> Slash heckle us, make fun of us. That's our job to do to you. Yeah, the reason... So it's really awkward if you do it to us. <laughs> the reason we're, we are attracted to doing this is the uninterruption. Yeah. The fact that we can talk to you without being talked back. But yeah. mostly, like, we actually do, I know sometimes it doesn't seem like it, but we do always work on new stuff and, like, spend time and hours in our week before the show uh, preparing stuff. And it's really hard to remember what you're doing if somebody's like, Jesus! Like, out of the crowd, you're like, well, I've got to comment on that, but I was talking about Arbor Day. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, it's fine to react, and it's we it's weird because uh, we're asking you to do two things that seem opposites. You know, engage in this social conversation by laughing at what we say, but you're not allowed to to really respond. Yeah, you're not. You're, part, you have, you're not us. You have one acceptable <laughs> response. The other one, silence. You can choose to not make a choice. I ruined the Still rush. Still a choice. <laughs> um. Yeah, hmm. ruining rush lyrics <laughs> is not uh, a material yeah. in 2014, apparently. But this is an open mic, so it's okay, right? Yeah, you guys didn't pay to get in here. Fuck all you! <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm totally kidding. Please Thank come you back. for coming out. <laughs> Seriously, it means a lot. Yeah. Um, do, we, do we have any other rules? We, this seems oh, cool. uh, We're winging this. Please take care of your bartender. He takes care of us all night. Yeah. That's a good rule. Yeah, and order food. Don't come out for comedy, come out for food. So uh, I expect food to be flying at the stage <laughs> as we say hilarious jokes. Yes. We're really putting a mouth. lot of pressure on all of you tonight <laughs> to do some things that you might not normally do. You're like Dad the Comedian. I expect you to be ordering food tonight. And if you do as I say, we'll all have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, seriously, we might offend you. Just, just shut up. <laughs> And we'll also shut up, hopefully. Yeah. Um, with that, are you guys excited to start the show? Woo! Yes. Well, I'm going to need more than that. I was saying yes in response to the three of you that responded. <laughs> Do you guys want to start a really awesome goddamn fucking comedy show tonight? I think I heard something behind those first two rows. I think we can go. Good. Awesome. <laughs> It's as if the people in the restaurant could enjoy a comedy they show could. as well. 
after they're drinking and eating. Yeah. All right, I'm going to bring up our first comic. Everyone, please give a very, very, very warm welcome to the great Trevor Stewart. on now? This thing's on now? All right. Man, that's hard to follow. The very great. Thanks. <laughs> that's uh, actually quite a climb to get up here. <clears throat> so I was, uh, I was hitting on this guy at the bar the other day. Don't worry, my girlfriend was there. Um, and he says, he says to me, I'm sorry, I don't sleep with poly guys. And I, I looked and I said, well, I mean, I know I play for both teams, but I mean, yeah, I bat for one and catch for the other, but is that really a problem? This is 2014. He said, no, polyamorous. Oh, wow. There's a name for my type now, a PC word polyamorous. In my day, we were just called sluts. That's, you know, in my day. It hurts, but I remember when I could go to a bar to hit on somebody, and now, now it's all just And I know what they're typing. OMG, totes creeper, gonna ditch, LOL. Ouch. You know, uh, it, it, it's gotten to the point where now all of my voicemail messages end with, how do you turn this thing off? I, uh, I've gotten to an age where I, I do still chase girls I just have no idea what I'd do if I caught one. <laughs> I'm, at my age, you, you, you know, you just kind of start to forget. The, what was I talking about? <sighs> I, uh, I, I, I felt old the other day when I accidentally called an octothorpe a pound sign because in my day, a hashtag was something you did with food. It's called a food fight. But uh, you all thought I was going to go for that drug reference, didn't you? <laughs> no. no. Uh, I, I realized that uh, I don't get kids' music these days. You know, I, uh, in, in my day, techno was what it was called, not EDM. Uh, and now I just, you know, I wonder, did somebody throw a dead mouse in a dryer and call it Skrillex? <laughs> and the, the EDM geeks in the back get it. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I also, uh, you know, I remember back when a gamer played games with dice and graph paper. Guys, let me get the Mountain Dew. We'll play all night. I remember that. <clears throat> wow, nothing on the D&D &D joke. Okay. <laughs> I remember when Nick Fury was a white guy. <laughs> I also remember when comic books were made of paper. I mean, I guess it shows my age that I have hand signs for, you know, a book <laughs> and a phone. That actually has a, a, a sound effect that goes with it. <laughs> if any of you remember what uh, a rotary phone actually sounded like, nothing. <laughs> I remember going to the video store to, to rent a movie. Now, 
I started to feel old when I thought, oh man, VHS, that's a, that was a thing. And then I realized I knew what Betamax was. <laughs> See, this is why I like being the opening comic. After you all hear my jokes, you're all really ready to laugh at, well, anything. <laughs> I, uh, I feel old in the mornings when I get up and I have more creaks and groans than a Bob Vila project. And then I realize that most of the TV I watch is PBS and I remember who Bob Vila is. <laughs> In my day, everything was cheaper, but we had to walk uphill in the snow, barefoot both ways on hot asphalt to get it. A few of you have heard your parents say that apparently. I've gotten to a point where uh, I can't actually hold my cheat sheet. I have to set it down because my arms aren't long enough to be able to read it now. <clears throat> I, I'm not actually that old. It's just that I have more time behind me than I have ahead of me. I'm over halfway through. And I mean, I guess that means I'm in the middle of my midlife crisis. <clears throat> and it has not yet uh, had a 19-year-old and a sports car. Any of you 19-year-olds got a sports car? Want to help me out with my uh, midlife crisis? I'll buy you a pop after the show. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, tip your bartender well. Keep it going for Trevor Stewart. So uh, this is my prop, uh, my character for this bit is called the Open Mic Comic. This is what you will see. <laughs> uh, so do you think if a cop murdered Bill Cosby, our entire criminal justice system would implode? <laughs> I. Uh, I exercise my rights for about... Shit, I ruined that joke. I'll go back to it later, you won't even know. <laughs> uh, today, the PlayStation turned 20. Uh, do you guys remember when the PlayStation came out? Yeah! Yeah, right? Uh, which means, if the PlayStation's 20 years old, so are all the characters. And if you were wondering what they're all up to, uh, Crash Bandicoot's in rehab, and uh, Turok knocked up Lord Croft while they were... Uh, Searching Spyro's cave. Raiding Spyro's tomb. This is what an open mic looks like. The, see, this is a character. I established that at the beginning of this. Uh, so Twitter uh, has engaged new, new tools for like reporting trolls and bullies. So my prediction there is that we, we think Twitter has this huge impact of what, what society like thinks about everything. That's gonna go away. We're gonna report all the douchebags that we know in like 10 minutes and Twitter's gonna be the new MySpace. <laughs> That's how I foresee things going. You know, uh, Kim Kardashian, she tried to break the internet by showing that uh, Photoshop picture of her ass. Yeah, no. I know, that was, it was really bold of her to, to predict that was gonna happen. Of course it didn't. But you know what we care about a lot more than a woman's ass? Gangnam Style. Because today, it surpassed YouTube's view count. It broke YouTube. Kim Kardashian could not break the internet. Psy could. I thought that was interesting. You wouldn't have guessed it. I will return to this character in a bit. Until then, are you ready for your next comic? You know, when I... <laughs> I never thought about this, but when I asked that question after doing jokes and you guys applaud so happily, it's kind of like, yes, get the fuck off the stage, Jesus. Oh my God, I'm ready for a comedian. What is this character? All right, this is this, uh, this young lady's first time performing on our stage. Everyone, make her feel welcome. Mary Walks, I, I didn't even get your last name, Walks? 
There's two A's. Two A's. Walks. Walk S. Walk S. Get it right. I'm sorry. All right, everybody. This is my first time performing. Okay. Okay. So be gentle. Be gentle. It's like your first time trying a new food. First time playing a new instrument, or first time hearing your grandmother queef. <laughs> so there's two things you need to know about me. That I have a horrible memory, and that I have a horrible memory. <laughs> it's really bad. Um, has anybody ever gotten locked out of their email? Yes. A Gmail account or something like that? They don't remember their password. It sucks. Um, they ask you all these trick questions like, what's your high school mascot? And what's your mother's maiden name? And what's your favorite color? And I'm like, red. And it's like, fuck no! I mean, why doesn't it ask you questions that you really know the answer to? You know what I'm talking about. Um, questions like, ooh, um, who's your baby daddy? And you're like, well, it's not Chinese, so that narrows it down. So anyway, the Starbucks barista, she knows that I have a memory issue. So she writes my name on the uh, coffee cup every time I go and order. And, um, you know, Starbucks is weird. The first time I saw it, I was like, is that a NASA space station? Oh my God! I'd like a coffee. <laughs> and, not only do they write your name on the coffee for you, they do something to it. They're like, oh my god, that's your name? That's not cool enough. Let me star fuckify it for you. And seriously, I thought my name was Mary, but after like 11 lattes, turns out it's Barry. <laughs> so nicknames are great, though. They're a term of endearment. They're also great if you're trying to pursue a career in porn and you don't want your grandmother knowing. <laughs> Unless your grandmother is in porn. <laughs> Which in that case, you deserve a 10% discount on Krusty Cable Toast. Volume nine! Not volume one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but nine. Um, anyway, Kim Kardashian, as Ken was saying, <laughs> Kim Kardashian has been in the news a lot lately, or her ass has been anyway. And um, there's a difference between a nice ass and an ass that you can uh, land an aircraft carrier on. I mean, really. So, uh, Houston, can we land? Can we land? Starfuck, you're clear to land. Oh no, we're stuck in orbit. Oh, no! What is that, a wormhole? No, that's Kim Kardashian's anus. <laughs> um, so she posed for these two magazine covers on the internet, and uh, in one she was butt-ass naked, and in the other one she was balancing her champagne glass on her ass like that. I can't really do it, I don't have an ass for it. But um, Anyway, she quoted about it, and she said, they said I had no talent. Uh, try balancing a champagne glass on your ass. <sighs> so what she's really saying is that she's about as talented as the table. <laughs> <laughs> but to top it off, she gets all this criticism. People are like, oh my God, what is she doing? What is she doing? She's a mother. Like, she's never done anything like this before. And, um, sorry, but I missed the memo that Kim Kardashian was supposed to be our moral role model. Um, and I really think we would have been better off with the table. 
Um, so anyway, going back to memory, my late grandfather lived in a nursing home, and nursing homes are great because not only does and nobody remember their favorite color, but nobody remembers color. <laughs> Everybody's lying around, and they're like, it has an invent yellow till 1966. And you're like, yeah, sure, right, yellow. And um, the other great thing is that everyone's racing around on wheelchairs, like a very disorganized game of musical chairs that only they can hear the music to. So my grandfather meets this lady and they start dating. It's great, it's wonderful. And um, this older gentleman walks into the room and he introduces himself as the lady's husband. And she gets up and she walks over to him and hugs him and she's like, nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, that's great, I really wanna meet my husband that way. And um, it doesn't go over very well. So my grandfather, he asked me to take him and her to the beach house in South Carolina. And first of all, that would be a federal offense because that'd be senior kidnapping. And second of all, he doesn't have a beach house in South Carolina. <laughs> so I took them to Starfuck. <laughs> the end. <laughs> This is awkward. <laughs> there we go. I got it right. Mary Walkis, ladies and gentlemen. So this is, uh, I've done this one before here, but uh, you guys still might enjoy it. Suck my dick until your lips fall off Don't make me ask again, please Put her down your throat until it makes you cough Nibble on my dick like a rat does cheese Oh, you're from the south, you're a special kind of girl Put my nuts in your mouth, bitch, like you was a squirrel Work on the shaft, cradle on the balls Baby, you just don't bite it, get it off, get it off Suck my dick until your lips fall off Don't make me ask again Please put her down your throat until it makes you cough Nibble on my dick like a rat does cheese well, Why don't you go down and hook a brother up Swallow it on down or spit it in a cup Wipe it on your t-shirt, let it dribble down your chin Smoke a couple new ports, then suck that dick again Suck my dick until your lips fall off don't make me ask again, please Put it down your throat until it makes you cough Nibble on my dick like a rat does cheese Now if you guys don't want to go home and fuck after that <laughs> I uh, was gonna... <laughs> I, I had my guitar on, I was gonna do that before Mary came on, but I thought that would seem wrong. I didn't want anyone to get the wrong idea. But then that seemed homophobic to think, so I was like, now I still need to make a clarification for this next comic. Winston, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Winston Smith to the stage. All right, so uh, I have not prepared for this at all. I'm gonna... Last second I decided to uh, practice on doing some one-liner jokes because I usually rant and ramble for like on and on and on for my jokes. So let's see how this goes because I'm not very good at it. <clears throat> First joke. 
I went to the store the other day and saw a three-in-one demo ah. a <laughs> thermometer. I went to the store the other day and I saw a three-in-one thermometer. That's checking the temperature through the air, the mouth, and the rectum. But I'm pretty sure that at least one of those ways is a firm decision to make that at one use only. <laughs> Can you believe Adrian Peterson got in so much trouble for beating his own kids with a switch? When I was a kid, I got spanked with all kinds of things. I'm glad you found that funny. <laughs> Belts, switches, fly swatters, wooden spoons, hell, I got spanked once with a dog leash. And look at me now, my life hasn't turned out that <laughs> That one turned out better than I thought it would. All right, I want to learn magic, but not one of those like kitty bullshit magic tricks. I want to have like a girl come over to my place and when I'm giving her the tour, we make it to the bedroom and I'm like, uh, this is where the magic happens. Oh, what's that behind your pussy? A condom. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I don't use condoms. <laughs> this is turning out great, I wish I'd written more of these. So uh, there's been a lot of debate and controversy over the Michael Brown case and the aftermath, but I think everyone is overlooking the real problem. A pack of Swishers in Ferguson is going to cost you way more than an arm and a leg. Yeah. Facts is facts, people. I had to center that for some reason. Uh, it has been a bad year to be black. No. Uh, it has been a bad year to be black. I scribbled so many times I don't even know where I'm supposed to start on this. It has been a bad year to be black. Uh, oh yes, someone as humble and trust trustworthy as Bill Cosby is being accused of rape. It's kind of making it hard for me to get girls in Charlottesville now because no one trusts the nice guy anymore. It's getting so bad to the point that I have to ask for tips on picking up women from Jesse Matthews. Oh. He said live with the legs. <laughs> oh my God, I wish I had written more of these. This is great. And meanwhile, in white news, Charles Manson is getting married. That's fucking great. So that means, so far, for 2014 years straight, it is great to be white. Give yourselves a hand. Give yourselves a fucking hand. <laughs> white pride, like, <laughs> that's all I actually have, but that's kind of crazy in itself. <laughs> when you think about it, like, that you guys clapped, like, cause like, you felt so comfortable to do so with me. But like, it's a little weird that White pride is a thing that is not allowed in public. Like, I can be black power all day, and like, Hispanic can people can be like, ay, 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 and maracas everywhere in the streets. And I'm totally, it's totally okay for me to say something racist like that too. But like, <laughs> but white people cannot do any of that shit. That's so, like, ha, but I mean, like, you still are winning. That's great, isn't it? Like, all you have to do to win is just shut the fuck up. How great is that? Like, we can agree with you on any racist subject, like we can agree with you on the Ferguson thing, but as long as you don't say shit, then it's fine. Like, I had a guy tell me the other day, like, I don't think it's a racial thing. And in the end, uh, we're all slaves. <laughs> I don't know, that's a little weird. Like, that word shouldn't come out of, I, I just feel very uncomfortable when the way people like talk about, oh, well, racism's over. Like, oh, yeah, that's, well, if you started, I guess you finished it, too, I guess, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, like, I guess that's one way, that's, like, Germany trying to, like, to get rid of, like, 
talk about the Holocaust and be like, quit living in the past. Like, it's not gonna go away. Like, it's, it's always gonna be there. So like, I don't know, it just seems kind of weird that a white guy would tell me that racism is done and doesn't exist anymore. Uh, speaking of which, I went to Hardee's today. <laughs> if anyone has me on Facebook, they know what I'm talking about. I went to Hardee's today and uh, did not know what to get. And the guy at the register was like, oh man, we got a five piece chicken tender combo for uh, $5.99. And I was like, all right, well, that's cool. And then I let my white friend go and he was trying to figure out what he wanted. And the guy didn't say anything to him. He just let him order or figure out what he wanted to order. But then I got out to the register and I was like, let me get. And he was like, come on, man chicken tenders like he wanted so bad as if like there was a bet going on back there where he's like i bet this motherfucker is getting chicken tenders i swear to god this dude is getting chicken tenders and the bad thing about it was i was there solely to get chicken tenders so there's that uh, i've been trying to think of where to go on vacation this year because usually i go with all my friends on vacation Hilarious. Uh, yeah, I've been trying to figure out where to go on vacation. And the thought had occurred to all of my friends that we should go out on a cruise. And all of my friends are white. And I started to think about it more and more. And I was like, I don't know. It seemed to work out pretty bad for black people the last time we got invited on a big ass ship. I think I'm good. History, man. If you don't learn from it, you're doomed to repeat it. Thank you. <laughs> Keep it going for Winston Smith. Winston, if you were into extreme sports, I would suggest visiting Ferguson on vacation. Woo! Oh, please. You're right, that wouldn't, that's not extreme at all. I, I'm yelling at the one person who went, oh, and disregarding the, the 10 other people who laughed at her. This is how I think. That's why I'm here. Um, so, let's just get to it. Our next comic, Loris. <laughs> he has a reputation. Keep it going as he gets up to the stage. Everyone, please give a very warm welcome to our, one of our favorite comics here, Loris Jarvis Jr. How's everybody doing? All right. I, everybody's using notes tonight, so this is cool. Um, I am, uh, yeah, which one goes first? All right. Uh, I'm really happy they got a cordless mic, so, because I'm moving around so much, so this is gonna, really gonna be helpful. Uh, all right. Um, life's been really crazy for me lately. Uh, I don't know if anybody has ever been under like so much pressure, pressure, so much stress. See, I can't talk. Um, if you just had so much shit happening to you in your life that you've kind of decided, like, fuck it. Every your responsibilities will take care of themselves eventually. Like, they shut the power off. You don't have to pay the electric bill anymore. Like, they shut the water off. You don't have to pay the water bill anymore. Like everything just will kind of take care of itself eventually. Um, and uh, oh yeah, like I, will, uh, I agree I will start paying medical bills when they figure out how to put the baby back in. Like that's, uh, I'll pay those bills then. Until then, fuck them. Um, oh, medical uh, stuff, that reminds me of a crazy story. Um, a couple weeks ago, I don't know if you guys heard about this, a couple weeks ago I was with a buddy of mine um, over at a bar in Charlottesville, and uh, well, it was outside of a bar in the alley. We, he, he got stabbed, he got, we got mugged, he got stabbed. Um, I called 911, and uh, I, I asked the operator, what, what do I do, what do I do? He's bleeding really bad, and she said, well, put pressure on the wound. So I looked at it, I said, you're never gonna get into a good college with those SAT scores. 
you did. All of my previous lovers have made me come. Yeah, that's. Yeah, he the R.I.P. Bill. He's no longer with us. But uh, that that that, I, that story is not true. That's actually it is crazy though. But uh, this this story is true. Um, my daughter is almost two now. Uh, I have a two-year-old daughter. Um, thank you. <laughs> that's the story. That's it. That's all I got. Um, uh, she she has her funny words. Like all babies have words that they say that are, they come out funny. Like she says uh, frog. Uh, she says fuck. And uh, Elmo is homo, which is both of those make it awkward to go shopping. Um, but I mean, all you know, every kid has its stupid words that it says it. <laughs> um, she, we, we, we play the cleanup game. We, I sing the cleanup song, which is clean up, clean up, everybody, everywhere. Everybody knows that song. If you don't, go fuck yourself. Watch Barney. Um, yeah. <laughs> So I sing that song, and, but she, she can't say clean up, so she says, uh, she says come up, um, which is, you know, it's cool until uh, her mom, when she has a poopy diaper, says to her, uh, oh, uh, go, to your, go to your daddy, he's gonna come up your butt. <laughs> no, he, no, he's not. No, fuck no. And, and that is a true story. Um, and it was, it was a pretty awkward moment. Um, I am, I'm glad I'm here tonight. Uh, I need to laugh. Uh, had some stressful things going on, but I did need to laugh. And they say laughter, they say laughter is the best medicine. Um, yeah, well, being the scientist that I am, I had to go test that theory. And uh, they, they won't allow me in the intensive care units anymore because I, I went in and laughed at the patients, and it really just pissed a lot of people off. Um, apparently, medicine is the best medicine. And then, of course, prayer after that. Um, and then laughter. Um, just, just kidding. Prayers ahead of medicine. Get your priority. You all need Jesus. Uh, so, uh, yeah, they say laughter is the best medicine. They also say that laughter is contagious, um, which is interesting. And I, I do believe that, uh, but I believe it's an STD <laughs> because uh, yeah, I have sexually transmitted laughter to many women. Um, uh, it, uh, I, I think it's, I think it's kind of weird that something that is the best medicine can also be, you know, incredibly contagious. And I think other, other things, if other diseases were like this, like if, uh, like if you went to the doctor and he was like, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Winston, you have AIDS. And then he just, he pulls out a needle and he gives you a shot. And he goes, oh, okay, well, what's that? It's AIDS. <laughs> it's, it's a lot more AIDS. It's, it's the best thing we can give you. Um, I just think that would be interesting. If, um, and I, and I mean, whatever happened to AIDS? AIDS used to be the man. AIDS was like, like I picture AIDS, I, I picture a, like an STD high school reunion where like every ball, the STDs come back to STDHS. And, uh, and like, you know, chlamydia's there. Um, you know, everyone was like, oh, what happened to gonorrhea? Oh man, the penicillin got him. I, I don't know, does, does, does penicillin, I don't, I don't know if penicillin, which one does penicillin cure? Whichever one penicillin cures, that's the one that died. All right, well see, that's a thing. That, like, like, and then they're like, uh, hey look, in the corner, it's herpes. Like, it's like he's, ne he's never left. Like, he's the janitor there now, he just fucking sticks around forever, he's always gonna be there. And then like, everyone's having a good time and in walks AIDS and it's like, it's wearing its letterman jacket cause it's still trying to be relevant. And it's like, uh, like uh, hey you guys, remember, remember how cool I was? Like stuck back in high school and it talks about like how it almost made it into the NBA. Like, 
I could have been the next Magic Johnson. <laughs> all right, that's all I got for you tonight. I got a short set. Thank you, guys. Loris Jarvis Jr., ladies and gentlemen. So, I'm almost 27, which means I'm almost 28, which means I'm almost 30, which means I'm basically 30 and still wear khakis when I'm not on stage. So that's where I'm at. I exercise my patience for about an hour a day. I call it weightlifting. Did you guys get that or are you just laughing at the cadence? The weight was spelled W-A-I-T. Now the other half gets it, that's fun. Uh, yeah, uh, people have been asking what my shirt says. It says, um, uh, I liked Weird Al before it was cool, but I really think I should just stitch again to the bottom because when I was in school, that was the most uncool thing. And suddenly, 10 years later, every high schooler I see has a Weird Al shirt on. Really missed the timing on both decades around mine. I was almost the coolest guy in school by 10 years. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our next comic coming to the stage, her name is Alice Blair. This is gonna take a second. Okay, that's not gonna work. So, I'm feeling a little blue tonight. Uh, man, that's, that's a joke about my poor wardrobe decision to wear like seven shades of blue. I, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that, was a, that was a bad choice and now I have to live with it, much like many other choices in my life. Now, no matter how hard I try to look cute, I'm always like the most awkward looking of all my lady friends. Um, and that wouldn't be so bad if I wasn't all, also uh, the least fun. Um, like, I've got my friend Megan, who's absolutely fucking adorable, and you know, she's the kind of like fun who's like, yeah, I drink tequila, cause one of two things will happen, either I'll piss my pants, or I'm gonna get laid, sometimes both. And I don't have the charm to pull that off. <laughs> my, my counterpart is, I don't drink tequila. Because when I do, I try to pick a fight with the manliest man in the room, and then I go cry in the bathtub until the sun comes up. <laughs> it's not, it's not good. Uh, anyways, we just had a lot of holidays, right? I was really excited. This was my first time, like, going out for Halloween. I was really enthusiastic. I was dressed up as Black Cat from Spider-Man. Anybody? Okay, okay, my, my friend was Raphael from the Ninja Turtles. Uh, the problem was, we kept walking around downtown and people would yell, Batman and Robin! <laughs> to which I would respond with, get a better childhood! <laughs> my purse got stolen, that was a shitty holiday. Uh, but no, uh, Thanksgiving is always fun, it's a good time, you know. Family comes together and I'm reminded how incredibly white we are. <laughs> Uh, and I want to quickly settle a dispute real quick. Uh, how many of you guys had ham for Thanksgiving? Woo! Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, how many of you guys had turkey? Woo! Yeah? Fuck all of you guys! Fuck all- you guys want to know what I had for Thanksgiving dinner? I had fucking steak and stir fry. I had some teppanyaki bullshit. I'm not Korean, this is Thanksgiving, and I know teppanyaki is not Korean. That's how mad I am right now about this. No, but I do like going to my mom's for Thanksgiving. She has a really extensive collection of People magazine. Uh, and it just so happened, they just had the, the sexiest man alive issue, which was uh, Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leave it to People magazine to make Thor look like a country music sensation. <laughs> and uh, I know other holidays are coming up. I have to start making plans for New Year's. Spoiler alert, I'm gonna be getting wine drunk with my cats. <laughs> Yeah, that's gonna be fun. No, but it's getting fucking cold too. Like so cold that you don't wanna get out of your car to put gas in. You know that feeling? And there's nothing worse than it being freezing fucking cold outside. 
your phone is dead and your gas light comes on? With the exception of it's freezing cold outside, your phone is dead, your gas light comes on, and you're drunk as shit. Uh, I, I did have a DUI last year. Um, and a DUI is really the gift that keeps on giving if the gift in question is being shit on by life. Um, but my year of a suspended license is up. Uh, I'm still not driving because I can't afford um, the jacked up insurance prices and rent and my car is too small to live in. Um, so I'm now a pedestrian in Charlottesville, uh, home of the world's shittiest city planners. Um, yeah, yeah. Lucky for me, I played a lot of Frogger as a child, so I'm prepared. <laughs> You know, I like to play this game. It's very Russian roulette-esque, where I dress all in black at night and try to cross the street. Um, but I'm in Charlottesville, so chances are like one out of three, I'm gonna get pummeled by Alexis, and then I'm set for life. So, I don't remember what I'm supposed to say after this. Guy at Panera coughed up a hairball. I don't know what that means. No, I do know what that means. So, sorry. Um, I do a lot of like, I do a lot of writing and work stuff at Panera Bread um, because all the other options are downtown and I can't afford two buses in one day. Um, and Panera Bread is coincidentally the worst place to start awkwardly blasting porn um, by accident. It's like you're trying to check your email on your phone. I kind of redefine smartphone like, oh, you knew exactly what I needed to get me through the day. No. That awkward moment when your phone auto-corrects pet code a Percocet? Yeah. Um, I, um, I recently started seeing someone. Uh, we ran into each other. Um, first time I saw him was at a bar I frequent. Um, next thing I knew, you know, taking the same buses, uh, shopping at the same stores, going to the same gym. I think we're at that very pivotal point in the relationship where I'm gonna actually introduce myself. a stalker joke guys <laughs> no I actually I think I recently did alienate the guy I was kind of interested in by drunk texting him um, every night for about a week <laughs> so that was bad <laughs> now I have social anxiety and when you have social anxiety there's a very fine line between social drinking and stress drinking um, yeah <clears throat> so I work at the SPCA and we are currently hiring uh, and I got to overhear my managers reviewing applications today, which was fun, um, because I learned that in Louisa County, you can graduate high school with a culinary degree. I don't know. We had somebody else just write an essay about how cats are children, and they were making fun of it, and I just, I was a little insulted. Um, no, it was bad. Uh, one thing at the SPCA, that is a dollar, and that is my dollar, and that's going back in my pocket. Um, one thing about the SPCA, we recently got sponsored by Bully Sticks, Anybody know what a bully stick is? Woo! Really? Yeah. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, a little educational segment, a bully, uh, bully stick is a dog treat. It is a rawhide alternative that is highly digestible for dogs. It is a bull penis. I'm not joking. Um, and this just made me really want to start a line of Hannibal Lecter themed dog treats. You know, call that one the Buffalo Bill. Get another one and it's like, yeah, it's fava beans and kidney flavored. You know, you got one called the Ray Liotta and it's just dehydrated brain of some sort. It'd be great, right? Uh, let's see, speaking of people who kill people, does anybody else know who Scott Pen Panetti is? <sighs> oh, you guys need to read your newspaper. Scott Panetti is a gentleman who was arrested in uh, 1992, faced trial in 1995, uh, for shooting his in-laws. Thing is, he was a, um, he, we all want to do that, don't we? No, he was a diagnosed schizophrenic, so there's been a lot of uh, debate. He was actually scheduled uh, to have lethal injection today. Um, last minute, they put a halt to that, so I guess you could say he got off scot-free. Uh, his name's Scott, it's a joke. <laughs> No, but it's, it's really interesting. Um, he actually, back in 95, uh, he uh, decided to be his, uh, act as his own attorney. He showed up to court in a fucking purple cowboy suit. He had over 200 subpoenas, including the Pope, JFK, and Jesus Christ. I kid you not, this is straight from fucking Newsweek. 
Um, and I was reading it and I was like, is this the news or the synopsis of a new Jim Carrey movie? Yeah, but um, he actually did have um, like a really long, uh, extensive medical case that the court dismissed because he had drawn cartoons all over them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, apparently, uh, his first wife came home one day and he had buried all of his furniture in the front yard to try to purge them from the devil or... I don't... Um, but I want to put an emphasis on the first wife. It was the second wife whose parents he shot. And I am still single. <laughs> As we discussed earlier, Charles Manson is getting married. And this is my life. Yeah, but no, um, I don't even, I don't even. But no, I think the problem is I, I don't really connect with a lot of people because I just fucking hate everybody so much. I heard a woo for that. That's a little sad. Um, <laughs> But no, so when I do find somebody I'm interested in, I instantly turn into a Stephen King antagonist. I'm not talking Kathy Bates here. Like, I'm talking fucking Cujo. Like, I start salivating uncontrollably and don't let them leave their car. Uh, that's all I got. Sorry, guys. Have a great night. Keep it going for Alice Blair. So I try to tell jokes between sets, and I do shows every two weeks here. So some of you know my jokes, but, but just do me a favor. If you know the punchline here, just wait for me to count down and deliver it with me so the people who don't know it can enjoy it with all of us. Do you guys know what the seafood chef said when he presented his new condiment? Tardar. Interactive bits. This is fun. Let's go ahead and bring up our next comic. Ladies and gentlemen, our next comic made everyone laugh a whole fucking lot his very first time on our stage here a few months ago. Give him a warm welcome, David Smith. He went outside. Everyone, let's shout. Let's, let's, let's make sure he hears us. David. going. David, 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 we are gonna keep going until you get on stage. Oh, here he is. Make it feel awesome. This is like a fucking Madison Square Garden sold out comedy event. Holy shit, this is amazing. David Smith. Really? That's right. Who said that? Who said that? That was Bill Cosby. Right? Let's get it up for Bill Cosby. One more time. Because he's going down. He's going down. Y'all white women shouldn't clap because y'all motherfuckers is doing it. We're sorry, guys. I'm giving them up. So all y'all white guys be happy because I'm giving up these white girls. Y'all can have them all back. All the motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I didn't come up here to talk about that. Ran inside, I was outside for a minute, now I'm winded. Y'all might have to call AMC, come get me. Cause that shit hurt like a motherfucker. <laughs> but I'm here tonight to tell you all about some shit. Shit. Everybody does it. Everybody does it. Feces. But. I want to change the name tonight. I want y'all to change the name to Boo Boo. Everybody's got a Boo Boo. Y'all understand that? Yeah. So can we do that? <laughs> boo Boo. It sounds better at the table. When you get up from dinner and say, well, I gotta take a shit. <laughs> Just say, I gotta take a Boo Boo. I'll be right back. Everybody's gonna laugh about that. See somebody laugh about that. It's funny. It's better than shit. And shit is bad for you. I mean, you laughing, I like it. You ever be walking somewhere and you gotta have a shit cramp in the motherfucker? <laughs> Freeze up, <laughs> gotta unlock a little bit and move a little bit. You gotta do that shit. We walking through the mall and shit, looking at stuff, oh Lord, I got a shit. 
I like his shirt right here, though. I mean, God damn. Oh, fuck. I might come back and get that motherfucker. You know, you know what I'm saying? When well, my legs loosen up. Yeah, I did. Well, how about when you're at a restaurant and shit? Sitting down, eating and shit. Oh, got that shit bang hit you. Oh, God damn, you get so. I'll sit back down to a stop. God damn. This motherfucker gonna hurt. Can you give me some shrimp? God damn. I'll be like, God damn. But the worst thing is, is when you go to the goddamn bathroom, run in that motherfucker and the goddamn thing's full. Shit. Gotta go back out. Wait for everybody to come out. Then you get that chance to go back in that motherfucker. That son is just full of piss. What do you do? Right? You want to clean some other dude's piss up or whatever, whatnot? I guess you got no choice because you're locked up by then. It's like crafts when you're fucking. It's your both legs lock up and shit. You're bent forward like you're skiing. <laughs> the fuck you going to do, right? You going to get that toilet paper and clean that motherfucker off and shit. God damn, I hope you don't knock it over like that. If you do, they need to get some, some maintenance in that motherfucker, right? Jesus Christ. But to get that motherfucker cleaned off and shit, what you do? Right before you go pull your pants down, you lock up again. Oh Lord, then you gotta count. Three, two, one. About that time? Oh Lord Jesus. That's good shit in there. That's called the praying shit. You know what I'm saying? When well, you gotta pull your dick, oh Lord, I love that shit. But you know what the bad shit is? Is when you got the motherfucking shit that got to <laughs> All that for that? But what about the vice versa? When is that? Yeah, that motherfucker next door has got problems. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's happened to me one time. Damn, I was still sitting on the toilet. I was stranded like this at Virginia Beach one year. <laughs> Went in there, had to go. Couldn't do nothing with my damn self. Sit on the damn toilet. Is my shit hanging out? <laughs> okay, I was just wondering. But I'm sitting on the damn toilet like that. I had to get. <laughs> Anyways, um, sitting on the toilet didn't have no fucking idea what was going on. And then I realized when I was done, no TP. Stranded. Stranded like a motherfucker. Try to reach up on one side. Ain't happening. Try to reach on the other side. Damn, it ain't happening. Kids running in, looking through the crack. Why you look through the crack? Why do you look through the crack? You want to see something one time you don't want to see. You might see the pistol back at you. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers running in, in and out and this and that and the other. So I came up with a word for what I had to do. It's called a squatting bottle. Y'all know what that is? I sit there for like over an hour. People, because I was at the campground, people were running in and out the damn bathroom. So every time I try to go to the next stall, it's like, oh, door come up. Shit. Door goes shut. That's my time. Door come up. Shit. I sit back there. Finally. The door fucking went shut. It was my time. Bang. Open the door. <laughs> to the next stall. <laughs> Thank y'all. Y'all have a good night.
keep it going for Dave, man. Messaged me that he wanted to be, <laughs> that he wanted to perform tonight. He said, I'm gonna talk shit tonight. <laughs> I was like, that's what we all do. <laughs> oh man. You'd think, <laughs> you'd think I'd be prepared after eight months of doing this to, to walk up on stage and follow a shit set and not the bad kind. <laughs> oh man. I always think like when I'm when I'm like in in Sheets or 7-Eleven or, or or whatever, whenever I'm in a restaurant, you know, there's other people that can hear me. Shit, I'm always like, why in this age of technology are we not just all just like blasting stuff from our iPhones? And I'll tell you why, because you don't want to relate the sweet sounds of Stairway to Heaven to the sounds Dave just made on stage. <laughs> So we all just live in that awkward silence where everything echoes and nobody's comfortable. That has to, that has to be like the, the, the shallowest level of hell, right? You're just stuck in a bathroom needing to shit forever. All right, my shit jokes didn't do as well as his did. That's fine, I can accept it. Um, so about farts. No, I'm kidding. Let's go on to our next comic. You guys, you guys are, oh my God, I don't know who our next comic is. Yes, I do. I'm sorry I'm a bad host. Anyone else want to host? You're leaving it at me? Okay. You guys just made your own decision. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. Boom, nailed it! Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Wagoner. Mind me, um, my nipples get hard when people say my name. So, some of, uh, some of you guys do too. Um, yeah, shit jokes. It's tough, man. It's tough. Um, so I, was, I was trying to relax today, and uh, I do this. I, I like to like, relax, meditate, and do you guys know what binaural beats are? Have you guys ever heard of this? One person? Okay, well, I'll tell you. Um, back in 1839, a physicist named Heinrich Wilhelm Dove discovered that if you play two different frequencies at the same time in alternate ears, your brain makes up the difference between the frequencies. So if you're playing something at like 100 hertz in the right ear and 110 hertz in the other ear, your brain picks up that 10 hertz difference and makes a third, makes its third frequency out of it, which is kind of weird, but awesome. Your brain can do that. And there's a lot of different ones you can do. Um, they have some, they're, they're really, they help you relax, they help you sleep, they help you get into deep sleep, they help you have dreams, help with meditation. Today I found one that apparent, that it's on YouTube, you can look it up, it says, uh, Hands-free orgasm. And it didn't work. <laughs> Neither time I tried it. I just thought that was weird, like, so I'm just gonna listen to something for 20 minutes and have an orgasm. That's not, I can't work. And it didn't. And I realized that it's kind of like being married in a way. I, I have to listen to something I, I really am not interested in for 20 minutes. And if I want to orgasm, I'm gonna have to do it myself. So there's married life. Um, yeah. My 
my dad told me, if you ever meet a girl who swallows, marry her. And I never asked why my parents got divorced. <laughs> Didn't want to know. It was scary. Everyone masturbates though, right? Yeah, it's just me, right? Okay. Fuck all of you. I don't believe it. Anyone that says they do, that they don't masturbate is lying. Or they're masturbating right now. I've masturbated twice since I got on stage. I'm real, real good at it. And sneaky. Um, I'm just kind of winging it. So if you guys have a joke that you want to tell that's funny, Um, I take things too literally sometimes, especially road signs. Um, I'm driving down the road and I see a sign that says, watch for turning vehicles. Because normally I don't. I just don't watch for turning vehicles. So if I get an accident, I'm like, oh, there wasn't a sign. I didn't know that there was going to turn in front of me. It's kind of dumb. They put up signs for everything. I don't know where I'm going with this. They do put up signs for everything. They put up signs that say, stop ahead. I can see the stop sign. Why do you need to tell me there's a stop sign when I can see the stop sign? State law, yield to pedestrians in the crosswalk. They needed to put that sign up to tell you that it's a law not to run people over. Really? Isn't that kind of like common sense? Like someone walks out in the middle of the street, don't you stop? Or do you just keep driving? Trevor keeps driving, because Trevor doesn't give a fuck, apparently. Um, road construction's always cool. They have a lot of road construction going around. They're like building bridges, and making two lanes into four lanes. And when I was little, I was always like, I want to grow up, I want to be a road construction guy when I grow up. That looks like an awesome job. You get to be outside all day. I could do that. That would be easy. My dad's like, dude, you can't know. Road construction is not for you. I'm like, really? I mean, it's not that hard. I mean, I can, st I can do this. <laughs> all right, I'm going on break. It's easy. It's an easy job. That's what I want to do. I just want to hold a sign and tell people when to stop and when to go. Um, you guys want to meditate? Oh. I, I, I'm going to try to imitate a binaural beat. Please don't anyone have an orgasm. <laughs> or do. It's up to you. I mean, we can talk about that later too. We can talk about orgasms later. Um, so yeah, I've been so I'm, I'm married and it's it's wonderful and all. She makes me say that. I don't really mean it. Help me, please. Get me out of here. I'm scared. It's nice being married, but I have kids, so it's not really that good. Kids kind of suck. I do. Kids are. Terrible. They always want stuff and need stuff. And I have to feed them and talk to them. And it's boring. They don't have anything interesting to say other than they want to watch Elmo or something. I, I had to go. Uh, anybody go Black Friday shopping last week? I know I wasn't the only one there because Walmart was fucking packed. There's at least one fight that I know of. But I had to go shopping, had to get some stuff for the kids. And I realized when I was shopping, like, oh man, I never wanted to be one of those guys that when you get older, you're like, oh, fucking kids these days. You don't know how good you got it. I didn't want to be that guy, but here I stand before you as that guy. And uh, kids have everything. You have dolls that 
talk, you push a button, it sings, it dances, it does all kinds of crazy shit. You have all these electronics, all this cool technical shit that you don't even, kids don't even appreciate this stuff. My favorite toy when I was a kid was a spoon. Not kidding. I used to sit in the backyard with a teaspoon digging roads to play with my matchbox cars. And it was awesome. I give my kid a spoon now, he must know where the ice cream is. And he'll play with it as a spoon. But there's just, kids just have, have, hold on. Sorry, someone raided my village. I have to. You guys play Clash of Clans? Okay, I'm the only one that plays Clash of Clans too, apparently. You guys aren't nerds or anything. All of you are nerds. Or you will be soon. We're all going to be nerds because we're being taken over. Apparently, Stephen Hawking himself. You guys know who Stephen Hawking is? He's one of the smartest people in the world. So that if we continue to develop artificial intelligence, humanity is fucked. He didn't say it like that. He said it a little more eloquently and robotically. But that's the basic of it. Robots are going to take over. Can you believe, I was, I was in a Walmart today. Walmart has self-checkout now. Isn't that weird? Where are all those 80-year-old women gonna work? Where are those people that drop out of high school work? They don't even have McDonald's in Walmart anymore. It's kind of sad. Have a moment of silence for McDonald's and Walmart. <laughs> I used to love walking through Walmart, eating french fries and drinking a milkshake. Now I can't do it anymore. I'm sad. Um, thank you guys. I'm gonna go now. This was fun. I'll see you guys later. Hey, keep it going. Until he gets off the stage. Tom fucking Wagoner. I know, right? Um, so, I've been eating vegan for three days. I've already lost five pounds, but I gotta tell you, that dude tastes horrible. Um, what if I just didn't address this thing on my head? I was considering it. Uh, for those of you who are at the last show, you're like, oh, I see what's going on. But those newbies, you're like, what the fuck is he doing? So this is my new favorite drug. Um, it's called TDCS. I don't know enough about it to know what that stands for. But basically, uh, this is a temporary superpower. You're allowed to use it for half an hour every two days to teach your brain to learn. And so I don't have any material right now, but hey, I've always wanted to get good at club crowd work, so fuck it, here we go. We got wireless mics. What's up? What's your name? Aaron, what'd you do today? Went to work. All right, that's really not giving me a lot to go on. Yeah, am I supposed to guess? All right, uh, if we go by majority, you're in an office. You're in an office, you have your own computer. You have two of your own computers and they have their own separate cute desktops, right? You don't have cute desktop pictures? Why are you not enjoying your work day? <laughs> Tell me what your desktop pictures are. Uh, of the mountains. And do you have control over your desktop pictures? We do. <laughs> yes. Do you enjoy your job? Normally. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you don't feel like I do and need to escape from every second you're on the clock. <laughs> I can't relate at all. Moving on. <laughs> Sir, what's your name for the crowd? Shane. Shane, what'd you do today? Let's see, I spent about three hours in a van with mentally handicapped people. You work with mentally handicapped people? Yes. This just stopped becoming a comedy show and became a live podcast. Welcome <laughs> to So Let's Get to the Point. I'm Ken Edwards. You need to tell me your entire history now. <clears throat> well, it all started with a drinking accident. 
That's what I call a few minutes ago when Dave was on stage. Uh, no, no, seriously, um, is there any way for you to tell me about the mentally handicapped in a way that you know I'm going to make fun of them in a way that won't make this entire room disrespect either of us? No, no pressure. <laughs> it's not a matter of pressure. You see, I gotta knock-knock joke the life your question. Yeah, this is an open mic, sir. We're all about knock-knock jokes here. There are no professional co professional comedians in sight. If Louis C.K. was at the bar, I'd be like, N not tonight, man. But <laughs> Louis, no, he's not here tonight. Here you go. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hippo. Hippo who? I can't tell you that. <laughs> All right. All right. I still, I still feel like I want to leave here tonight having learned something about the mentally handicapped that I didn't already know that I can use for future material. Is there, is there any weird occurrence you had today that I can't relate to that will blow my mind? All right, so uh, I'm having a discussion with a coworker today about a certain set of mentally handicapped clients we have that have made a child together. And, uh, you know, There's just something horrifying about this thought. <laughs> now, if I say mentally challenged, are we like, all right, there's, some of us are asking, are these people who with dementia who were just sitting waiting to die, or is this just a room full of healthy people who have something broken? Welcome to our comedy show, by the way, if you've never been here. It's more or less physically healthy people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, etc. Okay, so are the people in participation so far removed that they don't think it is a weird occurrence to see two other inmates fuck. Am I, should I call them inmates? Oh my God, they're not prisoners. We don't treat them like prisoners. Fuck you, this is America. We're good to our people. What do you have to say? <laughs> um, it's more a matter, it's like the social situations. Like, can, should people who can't raise kids have kids? And then I look at Jerry Springer and Montel and I'm like, eh, whatever. Yeah, we've been doing this for 20 years. We've been promoting this for 20 years. I used to watch Jerry Springer when I was eight years old and have no idea what half the words were. Like, the words that weren't bleeped, I didn't know what they were. So it was basically like watching a foreign language program. Because the other half, all censored. Thanks, dude. I'm sure I got like uh, a few more minutes on this juice. Um, what's up? Hey, what's going on? What'd you do today? Um, I ate an extra large pizza and took a nap. <laughs> you know this is America because that pleases a room full of people more than anything anyone has said on stage. By myself. Um, veggie. Oh, veggie. Like, I'm not, I was cool until I took the meat off of my pie. And then I fucking, it's still an extra large pizza and I took a nap. All right, all right. Wait, pizza from where? Food <laughs> Now is this like, now I, I'm actually intrigued, is this Food Lion pizza or like DiGiorno? No, oh, it's the shittiest pizza I can find it. <laughs> You're really struggling to not give me a brand here. I don't even know, I don't know. It's that meaningless. <laughs> it was just fuel for a nap. Mm -hmm. I call that sadness. Do you relate? Yeah, it was pretty sad. I feel bad about but it felt good. You're living your life. All right, so is there a reason you didn't get meat on this pizza? Um, I'm vegetarian. Oh, right. See, it's weird how scared we are to say that, right? Like, I haven't told any of you this, but I've been, oh, I actually did. It's so weird, I just told this joke. I've been eating vegan for three days, and like this has, I could, I, I can only use this for a certain amount of time every two days, like I told you, and I am struggling to not go shit my pants right now. <laughs> yes. Gassy. Let's talk about that. I, I fart nonstop. I'm farting right now. This is the open mic comedy show you guys came here for. Hey, what's your name? Melissa. Everyone give it up for Melissa, the other people who talk to me. I thank you guys for allowing me to indulge in this. By the way, there are like 
40 people in the back of the restaurant portion of this venue that don't realize there are open seats right here. I just don't get it. I will mention it for the rest of my life. I'm at the point where when all 12 of these seats are filled, I'm going to be mentioning how once upon a time, 12 people wouldn't sit in these seats. And that makes me feel old. All right. I guess you guys are sick of me. This is an open mic comedy show and I was not on the list. All right. Who's over there? Ladies and gentlemen, you're in for a treat. I haven't seen this guy in months. I am so excited to hear what he has to say. Put your hands together for the great white Will Smith. God, I haven't been here in so long, and I'm drunk! I had like three beers before I came out, and then I had another one that's sitting right over there, but I don't want to drink while I'm doing comedy, because that's unprofessional. Oh, man. Loris, you were talking about AIDS earlier. <laughs> I figured out the algorithm. Freddie Mercury was AIDS MVP. And then the tragic knee injury that benched it was Magic Johnson. That's an AIDS joke. You're probably all too young for that. Oh, fuck. Jesus. We know what we're all not too young for. Space Jam Pinball. Space Jam Pinball. I love the, the, the weird kind of like collage pictures they put onto pinball machines. And this one is particularly great because like you've got smiling Michael Jordan and then dunking Michael Jordan. If you look really closely, you have like stabbed in the back Michael Jordan. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, ow. I never saw Space Jam. Did that happen in the movie? Yes. It's good. I'm glad. I love how as winter gets closer, I become just more hipster. <laughs> Finger gloves and a slouchy hat? What the fuck is that? If I go to Brooklyn, I'll, Brooklyn, I'll get like rent-controlled rates in like Greenwich Village. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm the worst. Ugh. How many of you love Jesus? <laughs> a few. <laughs> that's that's gonna be good for these next few jokes. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite things about I did a lot of traveling over the past couple of weeks, and. Um, <laughs> I had to drive through most of like Virginia, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania. And you get to see a lot of bumper stickers about Jesus, and they are a gold mine. Let me tell you, oh my god, uh, one of my personal favorites. Actually, this isn't even a bumper sticker, this is what people say when they're like really stressed out and kind of like, mm. um, Jesus take the wheel? Jesus take the wheel, never really like made sense to me. Because if you think about it, if you're asking Jesus to take the wheel, you're likely in a high-speed pursuit, which is not good for you in the first place. Then you have to think about it as in, Jesus didn't speak English. Jesus was probably like Arabian. Arabian, is that PC? Arabian? Towelhead? ISIS. Is that, is that topical? Jesus was ISIS. Okay, uh, in, <laughs> so he's like, you're like, Jesus, take the wheel. He's like, and then, uh, you know, you're, you drive off a cliff, you do the whole, like, Thelma and Louise, and then God's like, you get first prize, because that's his favorite movie. <laughs> Jesus loved Thelma and Louise, little known fact about Jesus. Um, <laughs> this is what happens when I do this bit drunk. Um, <laughs> one of my personal favorite Jesus bumper stickers is one I saw in this very town, Waynesboro, Virginia. Um, it was a bumper sticker that said, um, it was, well, first off, it was championing their religious agenda, which is fine, believe what you want, but it was also championing their, like, crazy, like, 
right-wing conservative agenda. It said, what if Jesus had been aborted? Think about that for a second. What if Jesus had been aborted? I've been aborted. Well, um, you may want to go to the nearest hotel and check out the Bible and figure out that uh, he'd just be back in three days. So it happens when you kill Jesus. Roll away the stone, which in this case is your vagina. He's still there. Sonogram intact. Uh, yeah. I wrote this all down really slappily, and I wasn't planning on these lights. Um, morning sex. Morning sex. Who's a fan? Of, who's a fan of morning sex? Just about everybody. Whoa! Woo! If you think about it, uh, there's no. There's not really much to this joke. It's just it. It's all bad breath and boners. That's what you. That congratulations. You stuck around for that one. There have been a lot of teacher sex scandals lately. With this, uh, there was this kid who, uh, there were two teachers that were fired for having sex with this one kid in middle school. He was like 14. And they're all like, why did you have sex with this kid? Why didn't they interview the kid and be like, what's your secret, sir? <laughs> I can't get women my own age to fuck me. You are a child. Um, <laughs> So dating, <laughs> dating is, dating is stupid. <laughs> God, it's so dumb. <laughs> Mostly because I'm so bad at it. I'm really, 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 really bad at dating. It's just kind of like, <laughs> hey. Um, <laughs> just kind of like, <laughs> um, you might as well, <laughs> me approaching a woman, I'm really, really sorry. I'm sorry for them. It's kind of like, I'll walk up and be like, hey. Sorry you have to deal with me for a few minutes. Um, you might as well send in Woody Allen to do hostage negotiations. <laughs> like, uh, there's like, there's like 40, 40 people here and a bunch of, bunch of cops outside. And, uh, look, it's not good. To see, uh, that's my New York Jew. Uh, <laughs> or better yet, you're better off sending in a colorblind Michael J. Fox to defuse a bomb. Let that one sink in. Nailed it. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah. And, and all these things that are like my psyche are not the keys to a woman's heart. Those are the keys to my own house, which I lose all the time. Ugh. That's kind of a masturbation joke. What else do I got? Keywords. Anyone ever know what keywords for my bits? Ken, give me a keyword. <laughs> Kangaroo. Password. I'm talking about like bits that I've done. Oh. <laughs> Crowd work. Gosling. Crowd work. Gosling. Gosling. Ryan Gosling. Let me tell you a little something about Ryan Gosling. Woo! I had a tweet once. I had a tweet once. <laughs> Uh, speaking of tweets, um, <laughs> not related to Gosling. <laughs> I'm not going to say tweets that I did before. Um, actually, I am. Um, <laughs> let me just pose this out to the audience real quick before I go. I'm way too drunk for this. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> whose dick do I have to suck to suck Joseph Gordon-Levitt's dick? Before you said that, I was gonna say, please tell me it's Ryan Gosling. Did ever, slow clapter, slow clapter, 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 clapter. What's the word for lots of people clapping? I'm an English major, I know words. I'm an English major, I know words. I'm just up here being drunk and retarded. I'm an English major, I know words. Can Edwards come save me from Keep it going for Will Smith, ladies and gentlemen.
I thought it was funny. Um, so um, today, you two announced a 19 city world tour and nobody in the cities that they're touring in asked for it. I'm so happy all of you got that. Oh my God. I was prepared for that to bomb. Uh, 2014 is being recorded as the hottest year on record and also the year that we lost the most global warming deniers. They keep dying, I don't know why. You guys ready for your closer? Too bad, I need to ask you a few questions. So, uh, we're going to be doing improv at the end of the show, like we always do. And we're going to be doing the game set list. So, if you, if you aren't aware... Maybe I broke something. Hey, while we're at it, give it up for AB for letting us do this. Yeah! I'm so sorry, sincerely. Um, all right, so uh, what we're going to be doing for set list is, if you don't know, comedians are just going to come up in the order that they came on stage and they're going to have 90 seconds to make a subject funny. I don't need something very specific, like an Iranian female lesbian shopping at Walmart for Thanksgiving. I just need a general subject, something you'd like to hear comedians go on and on about. So. I need a few different suggestions, one for each comedian that's come on stage. So shout them up. I'm going to write them down. Come on. Corn. Corn. Got it. Thanksgiving. Hope it's not for Alice. What's up? Car crash. Car crash. Sex changes. All right. That'll be interesting. Norway. Norway. I'm not writing that down. We only know Vikings. Yeah. We are Americans after all. Come on. Uh, all right, uh, and other fillers. Pizza. Uh, pizza. <laughs> Grocery stores. Okay. The mentally handicapped. Uh, oh, mentally yeah. handicapped. That'll be really funny. Prostitutes. All right, <laughs> prostitutes. <laughs> Crabs, you have a choice in what kind? Irish drug dealers. I will put the Irish and I will put drug dealers. That should be enough. All right, now are you ready for your closing comic? She doesn't get to rest her microphone in here, it's very sad. Again, I'm the worst host. Sorry, AB, part two. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. You saw it at the beginning of the show. Here's our closing set. Rosie! Uh. Uh. Uh, hey, friends. I am uh, so happy that I get to close tonight. Uh, the shit show to end all shit shows. Um, but it's, it's really been great. And actually, before I get started, I would just like to uh, say uh, last year was, or <laughs> too drunk to get on stage, awesome. Um, last week was Thanksgiving, and I, our family gets together, and we usually do the, like, what are you thankful for conversation, and we didn't do that this week, or last week. We didn't do it this year, um, and that's because I was saving it for tonight, because the thing that I am the most thankful for is for comedy and for everybody coming out to see us. <sighs> Shut up. <laughs> Um, no, really though, I appreciate it, and it's like changed my life, and it's amazing, and all that shit. Um, <laughs> so remember at the beginning of the show when I was like, guys, don't heckle us, because we really practice everything every week. That was um, almost completely a lie when it comes to me, um, and that's because I'm a huge, I'm a huge procrastinator, and 
I'm really, really bad at finishing things, which just makes a dangerous combination when you decide that your dream life is to become a famous and provocative comedian. It's a, a, wonderful, com uh, a wonderful combination. Um, so nine times out of 10, I do all of my writing and research for these open mics, literally an hour before I come here. Uh, and that's not bragging, that's an apology. Uh, because tonight I'm gonna do something a little different and basically just give you all the ideas that I've had in the last year. And most of them are basically half jokes, so get ready. <laughs> Dire entries from my past. May 5th, 1999. Dear diary, I am so thankful that I am not a gay man. Dad says that if says that finding out that your son is gay is probably one of the worst things that a parent would have to deal with. Not because it's anything wrong with it, but because being gay in today's society is very hard because they're ostracized so much. He says that having a daughter is much easier because they are, by nature, not as sexual as men, and therefore easier to keep out of trouble. <clears throat> September 17, 2006. Dear Diary, it turns out that I'm a gay man stuck in a girl's body. I'm so scared my father will find out that I have sexual feelings. Must find a better hiding spot for my vibrating massage pillow. Um, that was idea number one, moving on. <laughs> have you ever thought about what it would be like if uh, we like really modernized Shakespeare so that it would uh, reflect today's like setting, basically. I know that there's been like Romeo and Juliet by uh, Lurz Berman, I think that's his name, Ooh. and O, <laughs> um, which is an adaptation of Othello, but they're still kind of like in the Shakespeare world. I mean, like if you really place Shakespeare plays in today's world, I feel like it wouldn't work. Like Romeo and Juliet would probably be employees at McDonald's and nobody would die they'd just be tragic because they'd be forced to work in food for the rest of their lives. <laughs> um, a fellow, it'd take place in Ferguson and still no one would understand what's going on. <laughs> that was my race joke for the night. <laughs> um, Hamlet, uh, it'd just be about a, depressing, a depressed dude living in his mom's basement. Um, I, uh, I got this new job, which is really weird for me. Uh, I, ha I did work in fast food all my life. You could say that I was Juliet in that Romeo and Juliet scenario, but I got out. Uh, and it's not really better, turns out. <laughs> not really better, because in fast food, you can call your boss to his face things like asshole or uh, douche nozzle. Uh, or micro penis, and they you you won't get in trouble for it. What are they gonna do? Fire you? You can run. You're the only one that can run the fryers. In the corporate world, you can be replaced. Uh, I know it's not funny. It's just true. <laughs> so I, I work in a more corporate job now. Like I have to wear makeup, which is real weird for me, uh, because I'm not a real girl, as the previous diary entry. Um, gay man stuck in a, a girl's body demonstrated. Uh, but uh, it's weird to have to like toe the line a little bit. Um, the, the perks though are awesome. Uh, because of this new job, I make more money and that means that my husband can stay at home, which means that I finally have realized my long, long goal dream of having a trophy wife. Um, yeah, I'm the one now that's getting my duck's dick sucked. <laughs> the truly funny part of that joke to me is that I always say I'm gonna get my duck sicked. Like, at home. I'm like, Tom, trying to duck my sick? And he's like, yeah, baby, come here. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, I'm the one getting my duck sicked. And I'm the one that gets a meal, a home-cooked meal every day when I come home. And I'm the one that comes first and falls asleep immediately afterwards. 
Not that that really has changed. I mean, I'm pretty much always done that. Um, something weird about my new job is that they actually pay you if you're sick. Like, if I've got the flu or something, I can just call and be like, I can't come in, and they'll pay me for eight hours that day. In the food world, that never happens. You have to, like, pay somebody else $10 more an hour to come in for you. Yeah, I'm going to be fucking calling in sick all the time now. Yeah, I got that Ebola, man. I just can't handle it. Got the shakes. Um, so... <laughs> I'm, uh, this is, I'm so sorry that this is scatterbrained. It really is. Uh, oh, so I am a girl, and I've always kind of existed in these, like, communities where there are mostly men. Like, in every restaurant that I've worked in, I've always been the weird, like, girl cook, not girl waitress. She exists in the world of men. That is right. <laughs> um... And it's the same now. Like, I, I'm the only girl manager at this job, and I live in a sea of men. Uh, and it's really weird for me. Uh, they, they've had a hard time adjusting. Um, I've only been there three weeks, and they've been kind of, like, trying to test the waters a little bit. Um, a couple times they would get ready and tell a story and then be like, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't. Like, I don't know why they shouldn't say something. I know that I'm the only person there. <sighs> so annoying. So one of these times, one of the guys were telling weird sex positions. Um, and I, of course, baited him and made him tell us what he was talking about. And he was telling us about just stupid things like a dirty Sanchez that he heard about that was funny. He told me about the angry dragon. Have you guys, do you know what the angry dragon is? A couple of you? The angry dragon is when you cr come in a girl's mouth and then smack the back of her head so that the semen comes out. Right? <laughs> so she looks like an angry dragon. These guys, of course, were not expecting me to think that's funny. And I, have, I of course, had a couple of my own that I shared with them. And I would like to share with you tonight. Um, Mr. Clean, uh, that's when after you both climax, he goes down on you and cleans up after that cream pie till it sparkles and shines. <laughs> if he's fast at it, you can also call him, uh, Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. <laughs> the Jolly Green Giant! That's what I affectionately call the men that have slept with my mother, because they're usually fat, and unbeknownst to them, they now have the sif. <laughs> oh, I love it. This is, the, yes, okay. The stuck pig. That's when you have a, when you make love to your guy with a strap on while banjo music plays in the background. <laughs> Don't do this tonight, though. It's called the secret selfie. Um, that's when you accidentally roof yourself. <laughs> All right, quickly moving on. <laughs> so it's winter, or it's not winter yet. It'll be winter like the 21st. But to me, it, it's, I know it's like 50 degrees outside right now. It's not really cold, but it's cold fucking for me. And Christmas is coming up. And that means that fucking Christmas music is playing wherever you go. I hate Christmas music. I hate it. Christmas music doesn't sound like Christmas music to me. It, whenever I hear songs, I just, there's something in my mind that replaces the words and I can't even like keep it from happening and it just makes it all the worst. Like, it's the most wonderful time for seasonal affective disorder and depression. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, suicidal thoughts all day. I'll be in therapy for Christmas because of my family. 
Um, and that's really what it is. Like, I hate Christmas time because you're for you're not forced, but you just end up spending tons of time with your family. There's really, especially if you have children, there is no way of getting like past it. <laughs> you, there's no avoiding grandpa coming in to see his grandkids on Christmas. You're just it's gonna happen. Uh, so I have a particularly hard time with this because I have compulsive thoughts, and around my friends. They're used to me saying weird, creepy things, but it's incredibly hard to keep that shit away from my parents. Um, some of my favorite compulsive thoughts during the, the winter time is, are fire ants, are, are they really just flamboyant housekeepers? Um, stop thinking about Weird Al's O-Face. Stop thinking about Weird Al's O-Face. <laughs> um, I often have the, they all know my socks don't match. They all know. Did grandma just queef? <laughs> smells like mothballs and Nutella. But that could be mine too. Um, how long would it take me to die from eating pumpkin pie? That one rhymes. Twice as irritating. <laughs> um, how many sweatshop children died making my shoes? I just, it drives me crazy. <laughs> Every Christmas season I have to deal with that shit. Um, and then, you know, it turns around and I, I make light of the situation. Uh, my parents often read nursery rhymes to my children. Um, and, you know, you've heard all the same nursery rhymes over and over again, but to keep myself entertained and away from compulsive thoughts, I've changed some of those words, and I'd like to share some of them with you. Wee Willy Winky runs through town, upstairs and downstairs in his nightgown, rapping at the windows, crying through the locks. Are the parents in their beds? It's time to log on to Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Jack and Jill both took a pill and chugged a pail of Jaeger. Jack fell down and lost the crown, and Jill came staggering after. Then up Jack got and smoked his rock as fast as he could caper, went to bed and bandaged his head with Klonopin and rolling papers. Thank you for that half-hearted laughter. <laughs> Uh, Reba Reba Pumpkin Eda had a man she couldn't keep us. She put him in a gimp and mask, and there she kept her piece of ass. Uh, and then finally I'll end with this. You guys have been great. Thank you very much. Uh, Rosie Posey put in pie, kissed the girls, and made them cr dry. <laughs> Nothing worse than a dry vagina. When the boys came out to play, Rosie Posey fucked them. Thank you guys so much. Keep it going for Rosie! Man. Man, props to Rosie. I just had a thought I'd never have before. Can old women queef? Why would I think they couldn't? As if queefing had anything to do with pregnancy. My mind made that connection. I can't explain it. You guys ready for set list? Woo! All right, all right. So uh, comedians, you're gonna be called up in order. I am going to call you to the stage and you're gonna have to come up with something funny for about 90 seconds. And our first comic for the night, Trevor Stewart. This is an encore performance. Give him a round of applause. All right, Trevor, what you got for me? You have to talk about something that is uh, very integral to sustaining our modern society. What do you have to say about corn? Corn. Yellow? It is yellow. Do you Although want to get up here? Sometimes it's white, sometimes it's blue. No, I'm not going for that rhyme. Um, <clears throat> it is, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of boring, actually. It, it, uh, 
It's taken over all of our farmland. It's, it's become this genetically modified organism. I personally like it like that. I can taste the genetic tampering. I say leave it alone, leave it like that. It tastes better. Um, like, like if you time traveled back to the 1800s and they gave you an ear of corn, it would just be the most disgusting thing. I'd probably be kind of bland, kind of gamey, a little tough. It really is hard to accept anything without chemical additives. Yeah, well, you know, okay. My, my proof of how this is good and how chemical additives and, and genetic modification is good is that uh, big beef is supposed to give you larger memories. And I think it's doing wonders for me. I love what it's doing for the rest of the world. <laughs> do you, do you, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> do you have any thoughts on Thanksgiving while you're here? What'd you do for Thanksgiving, Trevor? Nothing fun. What'd you do? Come on. I hung out with my family. It was boring so, or normal. Well, it was it was telling jokes and having fun. Nobody fought. Everybody was polite. It was boring. <laughs> it was it was almost unreal. It was like some Norman Rockwell painting. I I was actually glad to get out of there. I thought I was in some sort of alternate universe. So you're saying if people want to enjoy their holidays, shoot for boring. I suppose so. Interesting is, uh, well, interesting. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Trevor Stewart. <laughs> All right, Mary Walkus. Did I say it right? Yes, you did. That was my congratulations. That was my third attempt of the night. I finally got it right. All right. Do you have anything to say about car crashes? What? Car, car crashes. crashes. Car crashes. You can go with cars. Any anything amusing about cars you can think of off the top of your head? Mmm, car crashes. So um, recently, as in the past ten years. Um, <laughs> I have tried to apply for a job at a place where you have to learn or you have to know how to drive a manual. And since I'm a kid who grew up in the 80s, that never happened. <laughs> so what, all I knew. What's manual? <laughs> So I asked a bunch of people that I knew, hey, do you, have, do you drive a manual? Can I learn? Can I learn? Can I learn? It's like, fuck no, you can't drive my car. <laughs> Finally, I had a friend who was willing to give me the benefit of the doubt that I wasn't going to crash it and, you know, run over some kids or something. <laughs> And she said, okay, you're going to learn, you're going to learn. And went to the high school, and I was learning the different um, transmissions and all that fancy stuff. And I didn't die, and that's all I have to say. I didn't crash. <laughs> crashes suck. <laughs> Weird that you couldn't find a way to make car crashes funny. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Regardless, everyone give it up for Mary. It's her first time on the stage. Thank you for coming out. All right, our third comic, Winston Smith. Yeah, you remember him. That's all right to clap. That was the first black guy. <laughs> <laughs> and as if, as if you haven't conquered enough uh, controversial subjects, what do you have to tell us about sex changes? Who? <laughs> Jinkies. Um, would, you, would you date a girl with a sex change? Would I date a girl with a sex change? I guess oh. a guy with a sex change. <laughs> well, you don't know my sexual preference. <laughs> I, I know. That's why I apologized to her. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't think I would. But, uh, I mean, like, we've been talking about that lately. I'm saying we as if you know who the hell, like, I talk to. But, um, like, I actually had this conversation recently about, like, gender. Because, like, some people are like, well, it's not about what's there. It's what you feel. 
which I feel like is kind of a weird thing to me. I don't know, like, I, I guess I don't really understand that logic, but, you know, I feel like, I kind of feel a penis, so, like, that makes you a guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, so, like, like I physically feel a penis. I physically feel, I, you mentally feel you're a woman, but I physically feel a penis. We should probably stop right now. Uh, yeah, so, uh, sex change, good thing. I think, like, I mean, not for everybody, I guess, but... For you're, those, you're, not, you're not saying everyone in here should get a sex change. Yeah, well, I totally feel like people who are just like, it's all about the way I feel. That's someone that's totally afraid to cut off the balls, like, because they know that... I don't want to say that. <laughs> I was going to say they're just too good. But <laughs> but no, you bring up a good point. Honestly, anyone who who thinks they can cut off their own balls is more of a man than I am. <laughs> this is very much true. Yeah, 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 totally. And stuff them. Like, don't they just stuff them in or up? I think that's how it works. I don't think they chop the balls off at all. I think they chop the dick off and they stuff the balls. Oh, then I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 what? Balls become ovaries. Balls <laughs> become ovaries. Oh, they don't leave at least at least like a little bit of the balls as a clitoris. Like what? No, the, the, the balls become ovaries. That's for real. We have the we have the woman on the side of the stage yelling at us well. to stop talking. To <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Winston Smith. All right, keep it going for Loris Jarvis Jr. Loris, uh, the audience is wondering, uh, what do you have to say about, I can't read that one. Uh, so next one, what do you have to say about pizza? <laughs> I asked the fat guy about pizza, all right. Uh, what I have to say about pizza is, no matter what, well, Brothers is the best place to get pizza. Do you know that's where I work? Do, do you? Uh, but Tom and I both work at Brothers. Uh, well, I did not know that until just now. <laughs> uh, no, um, pizza, pizza is great because it's one of those things that the more drunk or the more high you are, the less you have to spend on a pizza to make it delicious. Like, you can... You, <laughs> If, if everybody's sober, you're like, oh, well, we got to get, like, zeros or somewhere. You know, and zeros isn't that expensive, but you got to get, like, put meat and everything. Yeah, CCs. But, but, I mean, you know, when you get drunk and high enough, it's like uh, you go to Sh ShopRite or whatever that place is and get the 74-cent pizzas, and you can eat a dozen of them for cheaper than I, I mean, it's... So yeah, that's that's one of my favorite things about pizza. Other, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, I've always thought like it, it is ridiculous. It's hard. Say you wanted to order a meats pizza and didn't order the meats pizza, it would cost like twice as much as the meats pizza. Like yeah. if you just add it on every topping yep. that's on the meats pizza, and it makes me think just like people adding on other toppings we don't have. Like, like how much would broken glass be? Yeah. <laughs> Well, when, you, when you say meats pizza, it, it kind of makes me hungry and sick at the same time. Because that, that's one of the most disturbing things to me about pizza. Like, I, I, I love pizza, but I'll take a slice of cheese or pepperoni. I don't put, don't put a fucking vegetable on my pizza, though. Um, I, but, but the meat, like, dude, when people put, like, 17 different kinds of meat on their pizza, or they come out with this new specialty pizza that, you know, costs $35 because it has half the grocery store on top of it. I, that's a little overkill for me. I don't need that. And that kind of goes the opposite direction, because if I'm drunk, I do, I want it. <laughs> but it tastes the same as, as the... If you put, if you were added, if you have some mozzarella cheese and some pepperoni, and maybe some Parmesan, and you get one of those 74 cent pizzas, and you doctor it up a little bit, it's, it's edible. Yeah, it's like, it's like, the more drunk you are, you aren't even thinking about the fact that you're inhaling it. You're just satisfied that something's in your stomach. Mm -hmm. And I like the, the, those 74 cent pizzas, when they're not quite crispy on the bottom, cause you just, you can roll them up in a burrito. I was, so I've heard. We've, we've just turned this into a fat guy podcast. <laughs> Loris Jarvis right. Jr., ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 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 
Hand it to Alice. Keep it going for Alice Blair, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Alice. Tell us about uh, your most recent crazy experience at the grocery store. Oh, at the grocery store. You said Buffalo Wild Wings. I was set. Um, <laughs> oh, no. This, this was really fun for me. So I got really, really shit-faced with one of my friends on, like, $10 wine a couple weeks ago. So, you know, yeah, luxury. <laughs> Ten bucks for a bottle. What's that shit? Um, but no. And I remember another friend picked me up. I don't remember very much between leaving my friend's house and getting home, but I know the next morning I woke up and I looked in my fridge and there was a baguette, there was brie, there was fig spread, and there was a Starbucks double shot espresso. Like Santa came. And, and two boxes of sushi. Whoa. Yeah, drunk Alice fucking takes care of shit. <laughs> um, and then I checked my bank account and I had spent like 80 bucks and I was really upset. And then I found like the other like eight bottles of wine and I was like, okay, it works. <laughs> so. So what's the Buffalo Wild Wings story? <laughs> I tried to fight a guy last night. Yeah. What? What did he do? <laughs> he was yelling in my, it, we, we went to trivia night. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah, it was a uh, friend's like, it was a friend's like farewell trivia night. You know, he's about to move to Richmond. You know, that's the thing you do to that's properly send do. somebody off. You ask them questions they may not know. Uh, fuck that, we knew everything. Um, but no, one of the questions was a sports question, so I didn't fucking care. And um, I was sitting there and some guy comes up and starts yelling something about the Falcons and pointing to people going, that's an answer for you, that's an answer for you. Uh, however, one of my teammates decided to get belligerent with the drunk guy, which makes sense. And was like, uh, actually, this is what's up. So guy got right up next to me and started yelling at Denny. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't happy because I was trying to hear the next trivia. This isn't, this isn't funny. This is my life. Just, this is a snapshot of my life. Just a little Polaroid for everybody in the room. And I don't get angry very often, especially at bars, but like I got to the point where I like slammed my arm against the wall and went like this a little bit <laughs> at this guy. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you happen to remember what trivia question you were so proud that you knew the answer to? Last night? It was like they played Radioactive by Imagine Dragons backwards twice, and it was really exciting. <laughs> You're I, telling me that's a good time? I don't know what a good time is to you, I mean. So if I play Radioactive backwards twice... And you get a gift card for recognizing it? Fuck yeah! And you don't think you get that same sensation without Imagine Dragons? I mean, it, it, it was the first time they ever played a song backwards, and I actually recognized it. I mean, somebody else recognized it first, so I just kind of sat there and was trying to write my set for tonight, but... Yeah. You know, people aren't laughing, but I think that's because you have such a backwards way of thinking. <laughs> Alice Blair, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, that was a compliment. You got, the, you got the trivia question right. I was trying. I was trying to make it make sense. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Wagoner. All right, Tom. I almost missed a step and I haven't been drinking. <laughs> Tom, this, this is a question I'm, I'm, we, look, we've been friends for a long time. Are you breaking up with me? I'm not. <laughs> In front of all these people? I'm not. <laughs> but, but I am going to ask you something I've never asked you about before. Oh, yes! Oh. So, In front of all these people? This, <laughs> this is over a decade's worth of friendship and somehow I haven't gotten around to this. Tom, what do, what do you know? Do you have any personal experience with prostitutes? <laughs> well, let me get the stool here and let's sit down and have us a conversation. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> Go. <laughs> uh, you want to know about it? They don't want to hear I'm it. not the only one. <laughs> they don't want to hear this stuff. Um, research, I got gotcha. you. You know um, a guy shit on that stool, right? That's fine. Yeah, you've been with prostitutes. I've been with a prostitute. 
so yeah, I actually I, I was I was yeah yes, but no. Um, it's gonna come off as kind of a racist thing, but it's not meant to be. Um, I was I was writing. I, I lived in St. Louis at the time. Go figure. And um, I was uh, about eighteen. About eighteen, I guess. The earliest possible age. To experience <laughs> I was legal. Don't arrest her. Yes, I paid for it, but she needed money. Um, she borrowed it. Um, but I was riding. Uh, I was riding through downtown St. Louis with a friend of mine who happened to be black and older than me. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, no. And we were we were looking for weed, and me being 18 and white in the city had no idea, and. We just kind of saw a guy walking down the street, and we rolled up on him, and he said, Hey, yo, brother, what's up, man? Yo, come here, man. You want to get some weed at dog? See, I couldn't do that. I would have got shot. That's not racist. That's just the truth. It's almost like a privilege. Yeah, like I can't talk like that. To yeah, these black people with their privileges can sell yeah. weed without getting arrested. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I don't understand. Um, and yeah, he just, no, dog, you're not even with me, but you go up to my boy's house up here, you know, he'll hook you up. So we went up to his boy's house, and the guy gave him the money, and while we were, the guy, Selling the drugs was an African American, and there were two other African Americans in the room also, and they were pretty big. That I'm just telling you. I'm just that, stating facts. I'm just I'm not saying this is like black people sell drugs. I'm just saying that better be a relevant point in the upcoming rest of the story. <laughs> well, let's see where this goes. <laughs> You're in for you. You started this. You asked for this. You're right. This is a pin and a lot of <laughs> This is Ken's fault. Beat him up for being making me be semi-racist. Um, while he he suggested while well, he they were they were they were large. They were big men, and I was BBWs. BBBWs. But they weren't women. They were men. They were, uh, they were men. Big big, so, big so black men. Big beautiful bowel movement. Sure, whatever. BBB. Um, and uh, he said, you know, enjoy enjoy one of the girls while I'm gone. And there were two girls that came down and sat at the table. And I was pretty nervous. And one of them looked like she had a serious problem with crack. <laughs> the other one, not, not, not so much. <laughs> So, I wonder. So I picked that one. I picked one with the less of obvious crack problem. I wonder what the addiction to crack ratio is with addiction to dick. I do not know the science on that, sir. Yeah, you went with the other choice. Bad question. I I went with the the least the less looking crack addiction. You felt in this situation it would make you feel more normal. <laughs> Somewhat, yes. <laughs> okay. She's the least likely to have some thing. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Crack equal crab. Potentially. Potentially. You're a smart man. Do you want to know the rest of the story or do I have to leave? Uh, I'm going to keep interrupting you, but I want to know the rest. Well, the rest of the story is pretty fucking pathetic because I was 18 years old and she spent about 15 minutes trying to blow me. And I was drunk and could not perform. Yeah. And here's something really interesting. Now, knowing what's going on in this house, right? I know that this girl's a prostitute. The other people in the house know this girl's a prostitute. They saw me go upstairs to her room. They can probably figure out what's going on. Wait, but wait, yet before you go on, but nobody saw, there hasn't been an ex a further exchange of money. Not to my knowledge, but I was pretty fucking drunk. Okay. And I didn't even really care. 
I was getting my, my wiener sucked. I'm, I'm saying happening. this for her image, not yours. Exactly, exactly. Um, where was I? So the people- You got uh, your wiener sucked. The other, well, sort of. The other people in the, in the house obviously knew what was going on, right? So there I lay on the bed with my pants undone and my business out when the door opens and another woman walks in and my first reaction is to cover up. Like she didn't know my dick was out. <laughs> and they proceeded to have a conversation for about five minutes while my dick was out and nobody brought it up. I was slightly offended. Just, just the my, day, di my dick is hours. out here, ladies. Don't you want to like talk about Shouldn't we talk about my dick a little bit? I mean, so, so, that's why we're here. So this is the day that like you're 18 and genuinely surprised that every woman isn't like astounded by your dick. <laughs> right? <laughs> my dick is out hello. Don't you wonder? And even though I couldn't even though That's I the first step to marriage, people. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's not fair. Your wife's not here. Um, that's why I could say it. <laughs> yeah. She uh, she suggested. Um, would you would you like? To, you know, I was apologetic to a prostitute. I don't. I don't know. It's never happened to me before. I've never had a problem getting an erection. You owe her a lot. I felt bad that <laughs> she was a bad prostitute. <laughs> she, she she offered. It, she said. Well, we could try to fuck if you want, and I said, with that, she she uh, needs your validation. <laughs> if you if you want, we can try to fuck. And I said, well, I guess we could try. <laughs> she said that'll be another twenty dollars. <laughs> said I don't have any money. I paid the dude downstairs. <laughs> I'm here for weed. Who are you? <laughs> I just came for weed, and that dude downstairs has all my money. So are you already high at this point? No, I was pretty drunk. I had got high because we couldn't find weed. Okay. Yeah, and I couldn't fuck her because I couldn't. I didn't have twenty dollars. So you didn't even think about saying. Lesson yes. learned, people: pay the prostitute, <laughs> not the dude downstairs. <laughs> I learned a life lesson that night. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Thank Wagner. You. Oh man, I learned a lot just now. All right, getting to our next comic. Please welcome to the stage, Will Smith. Now, Will, you've already, you've already admitted you'll have a slightly skewed I, perspective. I here. hit it up again. I got another one. Shit. <laughs> How do I follow that up? Do it my Gilbert Godfrey voice? Ah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Good. I, thanks for the, I'll put that one in my six shooter. <laughs> So, Will, uh, you, you either have crabs or the Irish to talk about. Whoa! You get a choice. How about... And what? either kind of crab, so you have three choices. Either kind of crab? Yeah, like Sebastian or the one you don't want to tell everyone about. Wait, so cartoon crabs, real crabs, or crabs that go on your dick? Yes. That's three kinds of crabs or the Irish. <laughs> You have given me a literal smorgasbord of comedy gold mining. It also makes me wonder how crabby the Irish are. Whoa! Let me ask you a question, Ken. How many potatoes does it take to kill an Irishman? Uh, 400 a day. Zero! <laughs> History joke! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Irish potato famine, circa near You are now all smarter. You're welcome. Has anyone in the audience ever had crabs? Like, Massachusetts crabs? And I'm not talking Cape Cod, born from the ocean. I mean, like, crawling around the crotch of a Massachusetts prostitute, Tom Wagner! I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna just walk off this thing eventually. Uh, <laughs> anyone from Massachusetts? <laughs> was that you, Loris? <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> oh man, crabs from Massachusetts. Um, I've never had crabs. Um, 
I don't. I, what do you? Okay, so I haven't either. Cool. Th this All is, right. High five. No crab bros. So we're no crab bros. So so let's talk about this. We what, did a podcast together. Listen to it. We're no crab bros. It's yeah, not. That, it's not the title of the podcast, by the way. But it could be the next episode. It should be together. for the next episode. So, <laughs> what do you think? about the prospect of crabs. The prospect of crabs, that's basically having lice on your dick. Yeah, it's scary. That sounds awful. Or a vagina. Or a vagina. Sorry, sorry to be sexist. I women ha I women ha can get crabs too, everyone. Women can get crabs too. It might be where you get them if you're a dude. Uh <laughs> I hadn't even considered that uh, that possibility that crabs would be on my vagina. It could they they could be all over your vagina. Have you inspected your vagina lately? Uh, I have. No, my my vagina, not Ken's vagina. I've inspected my vagina. It's right here, <laughs> somewhere, somewhere here, around around here. I'm guess I'm guessing. Somewhere near the, where the clitoris is, which I know where it is. I promise you, I know where the clitoris is. Prove it. What? Prove it. You want me to touch your clitoris? Yeah. Okay. You said you knew I had both uh, organs. Unzip your pants. This is... <laughs> do you want me to inspect you for crabs or not? Do you, do you want to know if you have vaginal crabs, Ken? I give up. <laughs> you couldn't... I mean... This started at a level that I that I could deal with, and then you made a joke that made me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Irish, Will Smith, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the king of Irish crabs. Your title for the rest of the time you're on the stage. Who's up next? Rosie. I'd like to introduce you all to the vagina in the room. <laughs> We've had three on stage, but this is the one. <laughs> Speaking of which, I want more women. I'm the biggest cunt on stage. <laughs> I, I do want more women on this show. Like, I, I don't want to have... Dude, I'm so proud. Three in one night? Yeah. What? But I hate that I have that thought. Oh my God, three women are on this show. Like, I just want even women. Yeah, like, but then you'd have to have even people, and that's just stupid. Then you, I'd want, have, you want other minorities in this show, Kenneth? What's wrong with you? Then I'd have to like... Next you'll be wanting Mexicans and Asians also. <laughs> I'd have to cater to the audience as well. <laughs> What'd you say? I'm sorry. I said They I'd were have, yelling at me. And like, I'd have to cater to the audience yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. That's not what this is about. <laughs> That's why you tell your vagina jokes for everybody. Right. Um, not to like go off the rails or whatever, but I did want to share my Thanksgiving story. Okay, I, I have a subject for you, but, I, I want but that if you think that's funnier... I, no, I want the subject. I'm just saying that I just want to comment on Thanksgiving. Can you combine them? <laughs> I don't know, can I? What's my subject? I, it's the last one. Uh, Drug dealers. Oh my god, actually, I can. Here we go. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. So... <laughs> Thanksgiving, right? Um, my family tradition is a little bit different than most people's Thanksgiving traditions. My family likes to get together and get high as a family together. Really? Yeah. Really? Yes, really. Like weed high. Yes, weed high. No, we're all smoking crack. <laughs> Come here, Mom. Hit this crack bowl real quick. I don't know what kind of Thanksgiving you have. <laughs> Tom's got heroin this year. <laughs> maybe maybe we'll get, uh, I don't know, what's worse than that? Ecstasy? That's not worse. I don't think there's any worse. Dude, that'd be horrible to take ecstasy on Thanksgiving. Can you imagine that? The ne next year we're like, yo, this is, the, this is worse than heroin. Try it. Okay, so my Thanksgiving story is that this year is unusual for my family because uh, unlike previous years where every year we would get high together as a family, everybody, like mom would, and everybody would get high together. This year I haven't been, I haven't been smoking weed in like six months. Um, and neither was my brother, which is insane. I have never gone that long without smoking weed. So, but, so this is the part where it turns into a personal conversation, not a, not a stage thing. Your brother isn't getting high? I know, right? <laughs> Kenneth, does, does Kenneth, not 
not confused. Is concern for my brother. What's wrong? What's going on? Yeah. Um, no, we're like he just we just didn't have weed, and I'm not getting high. Um, so at one yeah. point, mom didn't want to bring up the fact that she had been getting high in the bathroom, oh. not in front of us and the children. Oh. I know why. Why wouldn't she share that with us? Um, the children, I'm sure, would love to have partaken. Yeah. <laughs> um, but at one point, it was obvious, and we were getting ready to carve the turkey, and Jordan is like, what is wrong with mom? She keeps giggling over everything. And around the children, I was just like, fuck Jordan, mom's too high for this shit. <laughs> that fucking bitch got high without us. <laughs> she knew we couldn't get high this year. She, she, she did it anyway. She did it before high school. She's still doing it, yeah. getting high without you. What a bitch. But secretly, I think next year I would love to slip some LSD into her drink to pay back for this year. Just to see what she would do. Like, I'm sure she would just be like, oh, the turkey's the devil. <laughs> that turkey is alive. <laughs> <laughs> you killed it. The it's not the right kind. <laughs> this isn't the way I taught you to make it. You're, you're, you're wondering why your mom has an empty plate? That's an LSD joke. You guys don't get it. <laughs> don't assume they don't know what it... I'm sure that most of everybody except for me has taken LSD. So, that's you and... What do you... Take it now! <laughs> Under your seats, everybody. LSD for everyone! And you get you acid! Get and you get, get acid. acid! And you get acid! <laughs> what, why haven't you taken LSD? What do you think acid will do to you that you're afraid of? Well, remember earlier when I was talking about those compulsive thoughts? I don't listen to you. I'm kidding, yes. <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> I know nobody listens to me. <laughs> they were laughing out of courtesy. Yes. No, I'm kidding. They're yeah. laughing because I was standing up here and they felt bad for me. Uh huh. Because you're a woman. Yep. You don't belong up here. I am. It's sympathy. Oh, I'm just so, kidding. They the joke. Like me better than you. Oh, you guys. Stop. Stop. Um, seriously though, it's because I, I'm afraid that I will think horrible things. I have time and time again thought about doing acid and hosting this show. Oh, please don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I won't. Good, good. Okay. <laughs> well, now, thank you guys so much. <laughs> Kenneth has got to get to his LSD, so, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Rosie Wagner. <laughs> Thanks you so much for coming out to this show. We'll be back here with another open mic show in two weeks on the 17th uh, with uh, some of the comments you've seen here tonight, some new ones that you didn't see. Also, New Year's Eve, myself, Tom, Rosie, and Farley, who did not perform tonight, will be opening up for uh, the New Year's Eve DJ Fuego show here on, uh, on New Year's Eve night. How many times can I say New Year's Eve in one announcement? One more time! New Year's Eve. Anyway, please be here for New Year's Eve. If you can't be here for that, please be here in two weeks. Thank you. Everyone give a round of, of applause for all the comics who had the balls to get on stage tonight. I appreciate all of you coming out. It really means a lot to all of us to have an audience to try these jokes out on. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs>